it was it was a big dream that we kind of leaped into and if it hadn't have been for all of the people along the way that have contributed their passion and their time and their energy there's no way that we could have done it it's an unlikely yes. dream to start <laughs> to start a nonprofit at a young age that in itself is a struggle to to start any nonprofit and then to go well start a nonprofit that's going to save dogs that nobody else wants to help I found an ad in the Oregonian and it was like in 1999 so for uh, animal rescue in Southeast Portland that had dogs and puppies that needed homes. So Justin and I called from the ad and went in and met some dogs and ended up adopting a, a little blind puppy from there. And that immediately, as soon as I walked into the rescue and saw the dogs there and went through that process of meeting and adopting um, a second chance dog, a, a special needs dog, I walked out the door and knew like that I want to be involved in, in this somehow. And so I started volunteering like the next week and then volunteer turned into staff member and that turned into kind of shelter manager. And then in 2004, when that rescue went through tough times and ended up shutting down is when we started Family Dogs New Life in February of 2004. When Family Dogs New Life started, it was three of us. The slow San Antonio courses the plain and down Follow Tasha here, it was her dream and I made it mine as well to kind of follow her and Justin and they worked so hard to start this place, you know, I saw them build it from nothing. It was an old Ford truck place or a Chevy truck place or something, there was nothing here. Like Justin and Tasha put the fences up, the flooring, everything, they did it all. I think the first day we moved in, Tasha did this lobby, you know, she was already had a dream for the lobby and was painting and and putting it together and so yeah from the first day yeah we worked hard and we got to the point where we could actually hire you know other people to help us and get some time off and things like that but yeah operating family dogs on a staff of six is definitely making it work but that's why we we only like to have x number of dogs and, and you know, that staff members are only working so many hours a day or so many days a week in order to prevent that burnout to keep everyone invested and passionate about what we're doing and also making sure that we're not reaching out of what we're capable of doing. So to operate a shelter on a staff of six and have twice as many dogs that are here, well, then, you know, then something would be sacrificed. So we're keeping it at the level where we're not sacrificing anything, that we're all giving 100%, but but we're giving 100%, 100% of the time. We prefer to have no more than 50 dogs in our in the shelter at a time. We have a foster network, so that you know the dogs that are part of Family Dogs New Life. That you know the number is going to vary depending on how many are in shelter and how many are foster but in the shelter we we have a, a max of 50 dogs so we try to stay somewhere around the mid 40s is kind of an average but that that number will fluctuate within a week's time we're also helping with dogs out of california washington idaho georgia on a somewhat regular basis but yeah we've had dogs that we've helped from as far as New York. I don't see family dogs growing, growing beyond that, that family feel. We see growth in the future and we see 
an increase in the number of dogs or the number of, of people that we're able to help, but not to the point where it becomes something different than it is now. We enjoy the close-knit family feel that, that we're able to have amongst the staff and amongst the volunteers and, and that family feel we have with the dogs. That when we're able to stay closely connected at a smaller level, then it really feels like the dogs that are coming into our care are our own. And we wouldn't want to grow to the point where we weren't able to have that direct connection with, with the animals that we're helping or with the people that are, that are involved, you know, either by, by volunteer or by, by adopters or supporters. They do become part of our family while they're here. And we, we really care about them. And, you know, we love them like they're our own. Because the dogs are out the way they are, it's like we interact with them all day. They're not behind a kennel. We're not just watching them behind a kennel being stressed out. Like we're going in their groups and we're, you know, touching them and we're interacting and we're talking to them and we get to see their quirky little personalities. And But I think we get that opportunity to really, um, you know, have them be part of our lives when they're here and part of our family. <laughs> Having a great photo to look at or a fun write-up explaining their personality or, or a video to watch. We're kind of showcasing that dog's individuality and what it is that makes that particular dog special compared to every other dog that you're seeing who needs a home. And, and we believe that every single one of them is special, you know, that they've got something really great about them that's going to attract a really great person. And, you know, to spend our, our time and and energy on on pulling that out, you know, on on being able to pull up, pull out the beauty in each of the dogs and making that visible for everyone else. Yeah, so multiple reasons that I come and do this. One, you guys are my friends. <laughs> A bigger reason, having just like that creativity and good images for the dogs, I think is still important and will always be important. The fear or nervousness that the dogs might be in. You know what that's like. That's the biggest, I think, factor in, is it gonna go smoothly or is it gonna be a challenge? Every week you might have that dog that just freaks out. <laughs> the, the dog that just perks up, that you fire them off, they look this way and that way, their ears perk up, you get, you know, that smile, that happy, and it just goes really smoothly. That dog probably then has the higher chance of getting adopted, you know what I mean? I don't, and we try to make that chance for every dog, but some just are harder than others. Right, Justin? <laughs> well, I mean, it started because Pities were hard to find homes for. Like mm -hmm. we're we're both such advocates and lovers of the breed. Like we've we've had at least one, you know, pit or pit mix at home of our own personal pets for ten years now. And, you know, working day to day in the shelter and seeing how much tougher it was to find people to adopt those dogs. Like that's that's where it started. But yeah. you guys took it to. Whole yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you think about You like it a little? It's got the Would you believe it? I can't be mean it the way you do that. Yeah, I came right and started just volunteering yeah yeah, yeah. And i think i mentioned just hey have you thought about ever doing short videos for overlooked dogs yeah a good, good collaboration collaborational effort you know yeah pitbull video 
I don't know, it, it just, like any good idea, I think it just, you don't know where they come from. But I think video is just, uh, just kind of a good thought. Oh, it's sick. Yeah. Right now, they're running gun. We film it in like oh, yeah. an hour and a half. I go home for eight hours or whatever and edit it and make it the way they are. Yeah, we're nearing the 200 mark, I would think. Yeah, and I think it needs to be a mini movie. Yes. <laughs> For, for that. <laughs> well, I got I got ideas along those lines. Uh, it'll be sick. I got yeah. ideas. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Under pressure. <laughs> It certainly isn't just about the financial aspect of running the shelter, but that's, that's obviously such a big concern and kind of a burden of running the organization. So that that's the hardest part because it's the part I don't like to think about or don't like to worry about. There isn't this big pot of resources that we always have there that we're able to pull from. And like most everything else, we're we're all doing the very best we can with what we have and and making that that work. I think our biggest goal right now and what we want more than anything all of us is a building, a new a new building. I mean maybe not a new building, but a real building. We're hoping to be able to have you know a place that that's ours. And currently, we're leasing this facility that we're in, and we're fortunate to have it. It fits our needs. And but ten years from now, I, I mean, hopefully, we'll have the same growth over the next ten years that we've had in the last. And and to me, that would be having a facility that we either could purchase or or something that we could build to fit our needs and the needs of the dogs. But it's more space for you know for the dogs to enjoy more space that we would be able to help more dogs that it would be a you know a nicer more comfortable environment for our adopters for our staff you know and most importantly fit fit with the dogs One of the things that does make us special is when the dogs come here, they do become part of our family while they're here. And we, we really care about them and, you know, we love them like they're our own when they're here. Ultimately, for me, it's special because we put so much of ourself into it. It's special because it is, because it means so much to to the people involved in it. Family dogs wouldn't still be here 16 years later if it wasn't for the support that that we're getting from everyone around us. Like not not only our literal supporters, those people that are donating their money or donating their time to the cause, but the support of anybody that's you know that's willing to contribute something to the overall mission anyone that's willing to to come in and video you know or Hayes coming in to take photographs I think it's a little more than just loving dogs though it's more than just that attraction that we have to that companionship or whatever it is that that having a dog in your life brings to each of us as individuals, you know, it's different for each person, but I think it's about that attraction to family dogs or being so invested or committed to, to family dogs is about more than just helping dogs. It's about helping dogs when others won't. And I think that that speaks to a different part of us as, as humans. And anyone or everyone that's had an experience feeling like they were second class or not as deserving of something. And, and I think that that's a, an important part of, of why we love doing it. 
an important part of, of family dogs to have for other people as well. Um, 